Hi there. It's summer. I'm in my favourite bit of woodland. The birds are singing. All feels good. Now if you looked at a video I did last year, it was on tree camping. And it was in a big old yew tree about 20 meters behind me. Now I am hoping to do another tree camp later on this year. One of the major parts of any tree camp is actually getting yourself up in the tree in the first place. Now if you're a similar age to me, well you'll know we spent our childhood tree climbing. No mobile phones or screens for us. We got our enjoyment out of playing in the woods and climbing trees. Now, tree climbing was for the bravest, the risk takers. There would always be a tree that nobody could climb. And the challenge was there. Who could climb that tree? Who could get right to the top of it? In those days, we were brave and fearless, but we had no common sense. Now, as you got older, work, marriage, children probably took over and stopped you're from tree climbing. Fear, common sense and respectability all probably stopped you from continuing tree climbing. Now I'm saying don't let those thoughts prevent you from enjoying the exhilaration of being high up in the tree cam canopy. Don't let it stop you. You carry on with your childhood dreams. But to climb a tree safely, the certain procedures must be followed. You must wear the right safety gear, use the right equipment, and ascend high up into a tree in a safe manner. Now this isn't my job. I am not an arborist or anything like that. I just climb for the fun of it. Everybody will have their own choice of equipment and climbing techniques. This is just what I favor. Now, I'm gonna do it over two videos. This part one is just going to cover in detail the gear and equipment I use. We probably, we won't even leave the ground. There's plenty of time we'll go through this video and look at the gear in detail. In part two, we'll get a rope up into the tree and I'll show you my climbing technique, which is a single rope technique. And then as we get higher in the tree, we're going to use lanyards to advance further up into the canopy. But that will all be in part two. So first, we'll look at safety gear. I probably wear minimum safety gear. Having spent 40 years working for the electricity company, some days I had so much safety gear on, I could hardly move. So, I wear what I feel is important. First thing is a helmet. Now that is an essential piece of safety gear. It's there to protect your head in case you have a fall. But more so, I would say, is to protect your head for a fallen branch. You could be stood under a tree or climbing a tree. Something can hit you on the head. 
And another thing, you might be pulling a rope or a sling and there's a carabiner on the end. That can give you a nasty bang on the head. So, it's simple to put on and it is pretty comfortable. And I would say that is your number one piece of safety gear. Also, you can mount your GoPro camera on the front. Another bit, if I could call it safety gear, which I favour, is gloves. I like these because they're long. So they sort of cover your wrists up. I find with tree camping, you're always scratching your, your wrists and that. Also, these, they're essential really, because you can burn your hands on the ropes and things like that. And bark is very rough. It will scratch and tear your hands to pieces. So gloves, definitely another piece of safety gear that I would favour. Another important thing is eye protection. Now really, you should have safety glasses on. These are just my normal glasses. If I put safety glasses on, I need prescription uh, safety glasses, which when I was at work, they provided. I haven't got them now. But I always climb with my glasses because you get a lot of dust and a lot of insects getting into your eyes and also twigs hitting you. So some form of eye protection, yes, you do need that. I would recommend that. For gear, it's uh, for clothing. I tend to wear some old walking boots. I dare say you could wear trainers. You might get more feel on the, the tree with your climbing. I prefer boots. I've looked at many YouTube videos on tree climbing and some people favour bare feet. I'll stick with me hiking boots, I think. I tend to wear jeans. It's all got to be old. It do not half get wrecked and mucked up. In summer, you can be really hot. Um, it's not too bad today, but uh, some days you're sweating. You're putting a lot of effort in, so you're sweating like anything. So I probably just wear a T-shirt. I've got a fleece on today because it's a little bit cooler. In winter, yeah, you'd have a thicker, more waterproof uh, clothing. I don't tend to climb too much in winter. I favour spring through to autumn. Those are my favourite months for, for tree climbing. Now, we'll have a look at the gear I use. Now it's down to personal choice a lot of it. You can do it very cheaply by using a, a rock climbing harness, a rope, carabiners, and probably some prussics. I'll explain there those later. That will get you up into the tree canopy, but not very comfortably. I think you could say my gear is basically very, it's based on a lot of mechanical devices. That's just what I chose. And I would say it's a bit like camping gear. Climbing gear is, is nice to own, it's interesting. And like camping gear, you do tend to accumulate a lot of gear. First thing we'll look at is my climbing saddle. So this is my climbing saddle. It's a Petzl Sikoa uh, climbing saddle. Now you'll notice I said saddle. In um, rock climbing you have a harness. Tree climbing it's a saddle. And the main difference is you can probably see straight away. It's a lot broader and a lot more padded. Even the leg loops are very broad and they're padded as well. 
And the idea behind this is that for tree climbing, you're hung in the saddle for quite a long time. If I just wanted to go for an afternoon's tree climbing, I might get up in the canopy and I might just swing there for half an hour, just enjoying the experience of it. And this makes that possible. It's comfortable. It uh, spreads the weight and that. If you're in a rock climbing harness, after about five minutes hung in one of them, it will bite into your legs and your back. It will be very uncomfortable and quite dangerous having that compression at uh, one point for a long time. Also, if I was setting my tree camping portal edge up, I can be hung for about an hour, sort of just moving round, setting all the portal edge up and adjusting it. So you are hung in the, the saddle for a long time. So I would say, yeah, for serious tree climbing, you need a saddle. So I'll show you more of this later on when we actually do some climbing in part two. But you basically, you've got that bridge, that rope bridge there. And that is where your main climbing line and climbing devices would be attached. And that will allow you to ascend and descend. You've also got a couple of D-irons here. So, similar to a over at Linesman, you can actually put a lanyard, clip it on there, wrap it round the tree, clip it back there, and then you can lean back in the saddle when you're up the tree. So you can see it can be used for a combination of tree climbing techniques. Other thing, we've got lots of accessory loops all the way around the back. So all that climbing gear, you need somewhere to hang it. So you can clip your carabiners, your slings, um, all your other little pulleys, climbing accessories can all be clipped on the belt. So it will be quite loaded up when you first uh, start climbing. So yeah, we will look at that in more detail when we do some actual climbing. It's probably the most expensive bit of kit you'll buy, but you'll appreciate it when you've been hung in it for half an hour or so. Now when I tree camp, this goes on at the bottom of the tree and it stays on. You actually sleep in it, so you are permanently attached at all times. Even like I say, even when you're sleeping. And I have found it surprisingly comfortable. I had visions of it, it being stuck into me, but I think all this padding makes it so comfortable, you can sleep in it. So yeah, one tree climbing saddle. Right, we're going to look at ropes now. In climbing, there are two types of rope, dynamic and static. Now, rock climbers, which you're probably more familiar with, they use a dynamic rope. A dynamic rope will stretch. And the idea behind that is that it's more of a safety device. So if a rock climber falls, the dynamic rope will stretch and that will break his fall. He doesn't actually use the rope to climb up. He uses it more as a safety device. In tree climbing, we use a rope, same as this, and it's a static rope. It will not stretch. The idea is that we use the static rope to climb up. 
if you were trying to climb up a dynamic rope, as you, as you try to climb, it would just stretch and bounce, bounce and initially you won't move anywhere. So it is no good really for, for tree climbing. You want a static line, so it's rigid. But looking at it again, you do not want to fall. It's not there to stop you falling. If you were to fall just a couple of feet and put that caught you, it could injure you. So the idea with, with uh, tree climbing is you don't fall. You, you sort of put, you're climbing up this or you're attached to the tree. You do not use this to uh, arrest a fall at all. So that is the main difference between the, the two types of rope. Now, this is my cli uh, tree climbing rope. It's called Yale Hedra. It's 11 millimeter. It's got a polyester outer and a nylon inner. So it works very well with all sort of mechanical climbing devices. And it's also nice and flexible for tying knots. This came on a 50 meter length. Uh, that is how they sold it. Um, it suited me. I actually cut this piece to 35 millimeter, uh, 35 meters, because that covers me for most of my tree climbing. Um, and I like the short 15 meter piece I've got. Again, just a, a little climb, whether it's a tree or somewhere else, um, it's useful for that. So yeah, I tend to work with 35 meters for, for most of my tree climbing. They come in various colors. Some are very bright. I like this green. It uh, obviously matches the trees. And I don't always want to advertise the fact that I'm up a tree or something like that. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna hang this rope in this tree so it's hung down and that'll help me to uh, demonstrate some of my uh, other equipment. Before we put the rope up in the tree, I'll just uh, show you a couple of bits of equipment that are associated with that. This is a cambium saver or friction saver. If you think cambium is your outer layer, your bark of the tree that protects the tree, you don't want to damage that with the friction of a rope going over it. And you don't want the friction on your rope. So this cures both things. The thick strap rests over a bow and protects the cambium. And the two rings, they reduce the friction and provide um, a safe place for the rope to run through. Don't damage your rope, don't damage the trees. So that is your cambium saver. To get all that up into the tree, your rope, the cambium saver, you need a throw line kit, which is this. This bag is new and I have trouble opening it. Ah, I think I've got it. Ah, that's it. I've only just purchased this. So, to get all that up in the tree, you need a throw line. That's a throw bag, a weighted bag with lead shot. That's your throw line, brightly colored and thin and strong. And you basically get that, throw it up over the bow, it drops back down and with a real impressive technique, which I'll show you in part two, you can get that up in the tree, hung over the bow you've chosen, and then get your climbing rope pulled up through those rings. Really impressive. So that is your throw bag. Now, 
I've only just bought this cube because normally I had this out on the forest floor and it don't matter where you put it, you can guarantee when you pick it up, it'll have a twig or something tangled up in it. So I got so fed up with it, it didn't cost a fortune. I bought this cube, it keeps all your throw line neat and it stops all the, the tangles and all the debris. So I just uh, put all that back in its cube. Just move that out the way. So that covers uh, the throw line cambium saver. So I'm going to go ahead, get my climbing rope up into this tree and then I'll show you the, the rest of my climbing kit. I've got this rope set up temporary. It's just uh, so I can show you some of the equipment uh, I use. I won't actually be climbing. It's just to show you the different types of gear I use. So first one, this is a Petzl rig. It's basically a descender to allow you to descend a rope to get in a position to work or climb. So it's simply feed the rope through, important it goes in the right direction. So that's it with the rope fed through the bottom, out the top. In that position, its main use as a descender, you move the lever, and that allows you to go down the rope. You put it there and it locks it. Now, we actually use this for ascending. If you feed the line, the rope through that way, which you can do, it can then lock. And with other equipment combined to a, a single rope climbing technique, you can advance up the rope using this. And then if you want to come back down, just lower yourself down. You can then lock that handle over there and you're locked in one position so you can hang from this and be safely locked onto the rope. But we're going to combine this with some other gear to provide a system where we can climb up the rope. So I'll just take that off. So yeah, so that's your, your Petzl rig. They do a Petzl ID, which is a bit bigger and bulkier, but you could say it's foolproof. If you did get this handle wrong, you can come down the rope, where with the uh, Petzl ID, it will control your ascent. You can't actually fall down a rope, but this is a lot lighter and this was my choice. They do a pets, I think it's Petzl Gree Gree. That's a lot smaller, a lot lighter. I ain't familiar with that, but a lot of people do use that. So that's your rig. Another device we use is this uh, Petzl Ascender. So that clips on like that. And the basic principle of this is It'll move up very easy and then it locks on. Move up and it locks on. And again, combined with the rig, that will enable us to uh, climb up the rope. Again, demonstrated more in part two. Two colors. This is a black one, which is the left hand, and they do a gold one which is the right-handed. It suited me with my climbing setup to have the left-handed one. It's got holes in there so you can attach various carabiners and, and other gear. So yeah, so that's your, your Petzl Ascender.
To couple all this climbing gear together, we basically use a device known as a carabiner. Now there's various types. That's called a wire gate. And it's just uh, clicks in position like that. I use that just to clip gear to my belt or clip gear to the tree or to my portal edge. I wouldn't use that for actually supporting me. You only need something to catch it and it will come undone. I think rock climbers use these for speed a lot more. But I bought quite a few and they're great for hanging tree, uh, hanging gear to the tree perhaps when you're camping. Other types, that's a screw gate. So you basically, it'll open up and you screw that and that will lock. So yeah, that'll, I'm happy to use those, your life easily supported and depend on that. But you've got to remember to screw it too. Um, so it does need a bit of thought, that one. But I have quite a few of them. That's probably about the safest. It's called a triple lock. You've basically got to turn it one way, pull it the other, and then it will open up. So, and it's all automatic as well. So yeah, so one position, two position, and it will open. And then it'll click back. And that's called the triple lock. And that's probably the safest carabiner you can buy. So all my um, sort of life supporting uh, gear that I'm on is, is probably used more by those. We have another simple, very cheap device. This, this is called the Malleon. I don't know if you can see, I've coupled my climbing rope there with it. Uh, they're very cheap, they're probably only about a fiver each. It's made of steel, so it's quite heavy, but you basically screw the gate up and use a spanner to tighten it. And I use those occasionally. I might use that to leave at the bottom of a tree. Nobody's going to tamper with it. And sometimes a sling up a tree. If it's a little bit permanent, I'll use a, a malleon. So that covers carabiners so that'll couple all your gear together another useful device is little pulleys like this they are used when we set the single rope climbing uh, technique when we set that up you'll see the use of pulleys in there but I also use them for hauling gear up so with a sling you can put that up a tree Put your climbing rope through it and pull your gear up, say for tree camping. So I usually have about three or four pulleys because they, they're fiddly to get off the rope and there is a chance you can drop them. You don't want to be climbing all the way back down. So I take a couple of spares with me. So that's, uh, that's pulleys. Just look at a few more bits of kit. Again, I'll demonstrate these more when I'm climbing. This is known as a lanyard. On one side, you've got a rope clamp. So that'll allow a rope to pass one way, but not the other. So you can, you clip that to one, one of your D-irons on your belt, feed it round the tree, and that snap hook, you can open up, clip on your other D-iron. So you basically then can sit back in your heart, in your tree saddle. You can adjust that whatever length you want. So it's fully, fully adjustable, and then when you put weight on it, it locks on so you're secure so you can i actually bought the the snap hook the rock clamp and a carabiner a bit of rope and you can make those up yourself or you can make buy them ready made so that's one um lanyard i have another one here 
does exactly the same, just works on a different principle. It's got what is called a prusuk. So that's basically a coil of rope wrapped round your climbing line. With the use of a pulley, if you pull, it's fully adjustable. Once you put weight on it, it the friction from the prusuk locks onto the climbing rope. So again, clip that onto one D iron, round the tree, and then that clips on your other D iron. So with two of these, you can actually ascend a tree with lots of branches on using ALT, altern alternating lanyard technique. So you, you use the lanyards by moving them up, up the tree, so you are permanently fastened on by one of the lanyards, but you can advance slowly up the tree. I will demonstrate all that in part two. So that's my two lanyards. So the only other thing to look at um, is basically slings, that's about the final thing. These are just simple short uh, Leon, they're made by 24 kilonewton slings. They're rated for climbing but I tend to use them for fastening my gear on the, the tree, especially when tree camping, you take a lot of kit up and it has to go somewhere. So I put these slings round the tree. Use one of these simple wire gate ca carabiners and then you can hang your rucksack, your climbing, you have to hang everything up in the tree. So I use these uh, small slings of various lengths but they're not too, too uh, heavy, so that you can carry quite a few of them. I do have these heavier slings. I think this is a two meter one. I've also a, a one meter one. Um, basically, uh, this is made by DMM. It's a 30 kilonewton sling. It's just a lot heavier duty. I use those to support my portal edge with. That little 24 kilonewton is rated, it just don't feel so thick. So I like something a little bit thicker. You might wrap it around a, a bow a few times and then my whole portal edge will be hung off a carabiner. So I just wanted something a little bit heavier for that, for the duty it was going to do. So I think I can say that covers all the equipment I use for tree climbing. It was just to, to show you the gear today. So I'm gonna get all this lot packed away, recover me rope, and then I'll have a, another word with you then. Talk to you in a little bit. Well that's all my gear packed away now. It's surprising how much you accumulate. But it's a it's sort of a personal thing. There's loads of different gear out there and there's loads of different climbing techniques. So it, it's just a, a personal choice really. Now at first, tree climbing and tree camping might seem a bit of a daunting task might not be a respectable thing to do even childish should adults be climbing trees but don't be put off treat it as a challenge the sense of achievement as you clamber up a tree hidden from view by nature's green canopy. The thrill, the adrenaline, the exhilaration as you progress further up into the tree. Your senses, they'll be awakened. The bird song, the fresh air, the different smells, it all adds up to 
an unbelievable place. Now, I hope I've inspired you to venture up into this amazing world which is all around us. We've gone through all the gear I use on this video. There's no need to rush, I've taken my time. Let's get the, the basics right first. In the next video, we're going to cover use of your throw line and getting your rope up in the tree ready to climb. We'll then cover basic single rope climbing techniques and then once we're up in the tree we'll use both lanyards like your alternating lanyard technique to advance right to the top of the tree. So hope you found it interesting and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye for now. See you then.